Hey gang, <laughs> East Coast Lumberjack here. Uh, once I get out of all my garb. <laughs> Listen, if you haven't subscribed to my uh, channel yet, please hit the subscribe button down below. And you'll catch all these crazy videos as soon as they come out. Um, I don't know, crazy, informative, whatever. Uh, you, get, you, you, you can't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> At least as you get older. So... Um, I'm just in the process of making some handles here, and they're uh, they're headed over to Europe. So uh, I'm making three ash, and I thought, well, what the heck? I might as well throw in a, a, a hickory, uh, so Ben can take it over there and show some of the guys. Usually, there's people you know looking for handles here and there, and if people don't know what I make, then I'll send uh, this little prototype over, and Ben can show them what you know what my handles look like. Uh, they're pretty good quality, they're straight grained. Um, I'm having a hard time keeping up with orders, so <laughs> things are obviously going good. So anyways, as I was making these handles, I thought, I know what I haven't told them before. There's something, and, and usually, of course, when you're when you're making a handle, we start with a bolt. Okay, you start with what I call a bolt. So this is a bolt, bark on the outside. Okay, this is the, uh, the sapwood on the outside of the tree. And I split them out in a pie shape the whole way around the log. And then of course I draw my pattern on here and, and cut it out of the bandsaw. So I make all my handles by hand. Now, you know, I say by hand. I mean, I run them on the bandsaw, so the bandsaw is, a, is a, an electrical machine. But now what I do, once I make the first cut, so of course, the uh, this is how that, that handle bolt was. And then I drew my pattern out and then I ran it through the bandsaw and cut it out. So now I have two straight sides, okay? And I've told you this before, what really matters when you're cutting this, the next two cuts is that this piece here, where your eye is, and this piece here, where your bomb swell is, have got to line up. Okay, they've got to be level. Okay, if one is this way, one is this way, as you run that handle down through your bandsaw, it's going to tip. Okay, so all of a sudden your sides go this way and then they twist a little bit. So really key point from the East Coast Lumberjack, make sure of this, and if it isn't, if it isn't straight, and sometimes they haven't been, I've got a good example here. One, I made one here just a second ago, and it wasn't straight. They're all straight now. Um, there, right here, this one here. So this hickory one wasn't perfectly straight, so if you look at it up really close, you can see I cut this piece off, so I, I sloped it. So I cut a bunch more off of this side and left it high on this side so that now, if you look at them, see that? They're all they're both level. So if one's off cock eye to the other, you want to straighten that. Okay, so that's because when you run them down your bandsaw, if you make them on bandsaws, which I do, when I lay this on the bandsaw and start running it along, when I get down here and it lifts up, it's going to be the same. It's, on this, it's parallel to this. So my side pieces are going to cut off very, very straight. Okay, that's what you want. The, the more perfect you make these as you go, the easier it is to finish them. So, if this has a wobble in it, when I'm finishing the axe with my draw knife and spoke shave and uh, rasp, it takes a lot more work to make it straight. So, if you make it straight from the get-go right here, it saves you a lot of work. All you do is then just take the corners off and basically you just shape your handle where you go. So, that's one thing. Okay, so they need to be straight that way. I thought something else, but now it just slips my slippery mind. <laughs> okay, so then, so now when I go to take the other sides off, so now what I want to do is take this piece off. Okay, I want to take both sides off, so basically I have a, a four-sided handle in the, in the exact shape I want it. So, because most handles, now this is a nice handle. I get this from Mitch Hewitt, who's the, what, 15-time jiggerboard champion in Australia, so he knows a little bit about handles. And he's, you know, fourth generation lumberjack competitor. But he sent me this from one of his buddies out in BC. It's a beautiful handle, nice and slim. Now, if I measure that, if I measure this handle this way, it is 22 centimeters, or yeah, 22 millimeters. And 22 millimeters, here it is, I'm trying to find my measuring tape. I'm making handles again right out straight, so of course my bench is a mess again. So this is in inches, uh, three quarters, so that's uh, 
Sneak. It's not seven eighths, it's one back from that. Uh, oh, it's, and it's more than three quarters. Dun, dun, dun. Jeez, isn't that dumb? Seven eighths. So it's seven eighths of an inch wide. I'm oh, sorry, thick. Seven eighths of an inch thick. And it's um, 42 millimeters wide this way. Okay, so 22 by 42 mils. So because of that, when you're making, now I always make my handles a little bit bigger than what I want them. So it just so happens, <laughs> I get some hardwood, some hardwood flooring, and I've cut my pattern out for making, so when you draw your lines along this way, okay, you see the slopes in this, okay, there, there's slopes in this handle. So if you lay a straight edge along the top of this, like that, you see it's high here, it's high here. So as you're drawing along that with your pencil or your pen, what happens is when you get to this high, when you get to this low spot in your handle, your pen will go in. And what happens is it's not a straight line. It goes down and it goes in a little bit where it's high. So all of a sudden you get this warbly line along your wood. So how do you fix that? So again, that's a good secret from the old East Coast Lumberjack. I'll tell you what I do. I took, now my most common handles I make are Hetherington's and my uh, racing axe handles for two tie axes. And so I call it, one's a New Zealand handle, one's an Australian handle. They're fairly similar. The knobs are just a little bit different. So what I did, the general pattern along the back of that, this is where the axe head goes. And of course, it's here's your neck or your shoulder of the axe and of course it sweeps down comes back up into your palm swell okay so on this side i've cut out my piece of hardwood flooring to fit so when i lay that on here okay see how that fits in there perfect so now when i run my pen along it okay i don't have those indents and and where they flop out and flop in okay it follows it nicely and then on so what i did to save all those guys up to save a little bit of wood is on the other side, the, the second most common handle type I make are cruisers or double bitters. So this here fits the double bitter. Okay, you can see it's straight from here out to the end, but of course it's got the, the shoulder right here for the double bitter, then it goes out where it is. So if I take my double bitter cruiser, this is the shape of it this way. If I lay this on here, you'll see it fits that nice, okay? So that's what I do to make sure the second set of lines I cut are nice and straight. So this piece of hardwood flooring is really straight. I've got it cut out to follow the contour of the handle, and I just lay that on there and follow along it. Okay? So that's a little trick from the East Coast Lumberjack when you're making a handle and cutting that second side. Now, something else you can do. You can say, Rod, I don't have hardwood flooring. Rod, I don't have... Whatever. <laughs> I'll tell you another little trick. And I did this here for years and years. Okay. This is a buck saw blade. Okay. Now being a lumberjack competitor, I got a couple of these kicking around. <laughs> so the other thing you can do, the other thing you can do is use your buck saw blade. And I want to show you how that works. Okay, let's see if we can tip me down here just a little bit so you can see what's going on. Okay, so now I lay this buck saw blade along here and I just push it down where I want it to go along. Okay, so if we look at this, put out here along my line, you can see it follows along that straight line pretty darn close. Okay, not perfect. It isn't perfect, but it's pretty darn close. Okay, so I, I draw my line along here along this buck saw blade and then when I flip it over, to make sure I got the right thickness the whole way along, I put it on the same, I put the line at the same place on the teeth here and on the teeth here, so I know it's straight then. And then I'll push it down where it's high and draw my line along here. Okay, so I use this. I used that uh, buck saw uh, blade for years, years and years. And because it wasn't perfect, drove me nuts so I said I need another way and again just by doing it over time 
I got thinking about it and thought, well, gee, if, if I have a piece of wood that, that sh is shaped that same way, I can just lay it down there and I won't have those highs and lows. And it'll make it nice and straight for me. So that's what I did. So I made this little baby here. Okay. So again, maybe you make your handles from scratch. Maybe you chisel them out with an axe, whatever you do. But I make mine on a bandsaw. Okay. Most guys have access to a bandsaw. You know, they're what? Well, if you want a commercial one, it's about a thousand bucks. For, for a good bandsaw and uh, you'll make your money back the first year you make handles not that I want a lot of competition <laughs> but again I'm not in this to make a pile of money I like I love making axe handles and I love making high quality axe handles and there's a lot to it you got to get wood you got to get anyways there's a lot to it so if I can help you a little bit all the better so anyways that's what I do with bandsaws so that will give you the straight line right down the back of your axe handles Okay, and again, the light is not working with me here. Okay, so as I was doing that, I was making these handles and saying, man, that's a neat little trick that I don't think I've told anybody yet. So there you go. From the East Coast Lumberjack, you want to keep that handle straight both directions. Make sure your, your palm swell at the bottom where it flares out and the top where your axe eye is. Make sure those are both perfectly parallel. Okay, so when you're running it through your bandsaw, it's not going to flop on you one way or the other. The second thing you want to do is get a tool like that to draw your side lines so that they're straight top to bottom. And then, depending on what the type of handle is, sometimes guys want larger handles, larger eyes. If they want, if they get a one inch or greater than a one inch eye, I know that my three quarter inch hardwood is, of course, three quarters of an inch. So if I stand my if I stand my pen up along here, if I if I cut in do it right tight at an angle, I know I'm going to have three quarters of an inch. If I stand it up, of course, I've got, I just gained another, almost an eighth of an inch along here. So if I gain an eighth of an inch on both sides, of course, I have a full inch. And if I know I have a full inch and the guy wants an inch and an eighth or something, then of course, I'll just start my bandsaw cut outside of that line a little bit when I'm coming down. I know what the other thing is that I want to tell you. The other thing I, I've, I've struggled with, and I've mentioned this before, but I, again, unless you go through all my videos on this YouTube channel, you won't get that. So I, I, what I thought I'd start doing now is throwing some of this back in again. So if you watch a recent video, you'll get stuff that I've said a year or two years ago on the on the YouTube channel. Okay, so the other thing that I've had a hard time doing is when I, and you may you may find this as well, but when I run this through the bandsaw, if I cut this side the whole way off, this side the whole way off, and then I make my slot for my uh, wedge, it doesn't go straight. Not know why that happens. So unless just taking the outside piece off, it's it's a little bit different. Whatever it is, but I've I had a heart for for a long time. Some guys even said Cumberland, <laughs> don't put the flipping slot in there for the eye because it's not on the center. Okay, and and it drives. But believe me, guys, it drives me more nuts than it does you because I'm a perfectionist. But what I've learned, what I've learned to get that straight. I just cut in here about two inches on one, and I stop. I come back out, center it here, cut down here the whole uh, depth of the wedge slot, come back out, and then I take this whole side off then. So I've got this one down two inches, the first line down two inches, the, the wedge line down where it's supposed to be, and then I take the whole other side off, and I find when I do that, they're all nice and parallel. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Okay, just take me two seconds to do this, but this is my hickory, and I'm going to show you what I do on the bandsaw. Okay, so you saw that. I did one little cut, as I mentioned. Okay. <clears throat> it's making light. <laughs> it drives me nuts. Okay, there. So I did one little cut in here, two inches. I cut my wedge line, or where you're going to put your wedge eventually, down here at the depth I want it. 
And what depth is that? Do we know what depth that is? Now, I'll tell you a couple things. If you don't make it deep enough, the first thing that happen when you're wedging, your wedge will go down there so far, and because it's not in there very far, and you're wedging it out, sometimes that will split. And it will carry right down, come out the bottom of your eye, and split down your handle. So, making it uh, not deep enough is a no-no. Now, typically, I, I usually say you want your wedge line in at least halfway down the size of the head. So if you have a three inch head, if your head is three inches high, so the height of your head, I mean this way, okay, the height of your axe head. Now this is a neat little axe head that uh, Scott Reed made for my daughter when she was little and it's really light. Gosh, I might sell this, okay? So if you have somebody that wants to do axe throwing and they want a really light little axe, okay, Scott Reed made that. He's, he's our hot saw guru here in the Maritimes, really neat guy. So I pop a hand, well, actually, I have three grandkids now. Let's take that back. <laughs> I, think, I think I'll save this for the grandkids. Okay, and pop a handle in that for them. But anyways, so what I would do on this one here is you want it at least halfway down the depth of the eye. Here is a lot different axe. This is a tuatai, okay, four inches. So I would make my slot at least two inches down on this on this uh, axe head. So that would be my rule of thumb is make it at least halfway down that. Sometimes you might have to go, it depends. That's probably, if, you, if your wedge is shaped, unless you have a really, really, really gradually uh, sloped wedge, it won't get the whole way down there. Okay? So, having said that, about half the depth of your axe head. So most of these handles I'm making here for a four inch head, so that's gonna be a two inch. That's probably maybe two and a quarter, two and a half inches down there. And then I did my other, now of course I'm just gonna keep on going right down and take this side off. Look. Okay, nice and straight. So <laughs> I finally solved this one by learning to not go the whole way down and take both sides off before I put my wedge slot in there. So now what I'll do is actually I do Two inches down one side, do my wedge slot then, then go down the other side, and they're all parallel. So it took the old East Coast Lumberjack. I bet you it took me 20 years to figure that one out. <laughs> so I just saved you 20 years of frustration and put it all here in a video so you know how to do your, uh, your wedge slot. So there. How's that for an informative video? Anyway, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and uh, join us again next week. As soon as these come up, you'll, uh, you'll be the first one to get them. Take care.